It is the day. Hey. It's the day. It is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice. I don't know about you. something on the way to my house. I, I feel like after everything I've gone through in the last eight months that in this ninth month God is about I'm, so that's why I'm acting stupid because it's the first Sunday of my birthing month and I got a few weeks to push through some stuff. I got a few weeks to push this thing out. And I know you may be fine and dandy, but there's some folk in here that say, God, if you don't come through for me this month, I'm done. If you don't come through for me in the next few days, I'm finished. So I believe that as we praise today, God is releasing some So today in this praise, what we're doing is somebody say stretching. We're stretching. We're stretching. I stretch toward. I reach towards. Some of us don't know nothing about stretching because we don't even stretch in real life. But when you stretch, you're stretching usually to prepare your body. for some activity that's about to take place. So today, all you're doing is stretching a little bit for some activity that's about, Sister Batana, about to take. I gotta get to the word. We're gonna, but Billy, I just felt something. I felt something jump in my spirit, but I know I don't want y'all to leave me in the time get away from me, Julius, but Dr. Hood, I just felt something creep up in my spirit. And I think we've done a lot of singing today, but worship is common for the upright. And it's something that just really leaped up and just walked up in my spirit. I'm going to do a part of it, Deacon Gilbert, and maybe the church may know it. If you don't, it's okay. Father. Mother Lee, I, I stretch. That's where some of us are today. My hand to, to thee. No If I withdraw thyself from, from, from me, where, oh, where, where the same. I got a yes in my spirit. Yes, yes Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, Lord! Yes, 
yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. shut up because I've come too far. too far he's done so much I cannot tell it all he's done so much you hear me Whitney he's done so much no matter how hard it looks now he's done so much he's done so much he's done so much and he's not done he's not done there's still something on the way there's still something more left for you he's not done he's not done he's not what it is he always comes through oh, he always comes through don't he don't he don't he he always 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 he always, he always comes always. through
Somebody hold your hand up, BK. Look at your two fingers. Squeeze them down just before they touch. Look at that. I'm just that close. I'm just that close. If I can just hold on and wait just a look, I'm just that close. I'm just that close. The thing I prayed about, I'm just that close. I could be one hallelujah away. I could be one thank you, Jesus, but I'm just. I'm almost there. I got to get to the word. I'm almost there. I may be one step away, one door away. I'm almost there. Jackie, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. All right. We are. Today, some stuff is just necessary. I don't apologize for acting crazy because sometimes crazy acting is what produces crazy miracles. And I just realized today I'm not as far as I thought I was. But I'm Y'all gonna be in the car at a stop. It's like time myself. When that car get to sputtering and you like, Lord, when you going when you gotta go to the grocery store and trying to choose, have a light decision on what you're gonna buy for your babies or what you can't buy, I dare you at the cashier. That's all right. Yeah. I'm not gonna have to decide between bread and milk forever because I'm just. Last week I could have been this close. Yesterday I could have been that. But today, I. Matter of fact, I ain't, they ain't got nothing to do with the milk. But this week, I day when somebody say, how you doing? Be like, I'm that close. I'm that close. How your business doing? We that close. We that close. How your baby's doing? We that close. We that, what you mean? I'm that close. What you doing this week? Going from that close to that close? We are cont- ah! God, I say, my God, here it is. Uh, we're going to celebrate at the end of this. We are hey, in our series continue, but I'm going to take a detour today too, but we series continue, my family instead of modern family. This month we're going to dig into some more family things. Anybody was blessed by the modern family series? Amen. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Um, uh, today, I felt impressed in my spirit to do part two, Bonetta of Winded. Sometimes, and I learned this from my dad, God will detour you not because the plan wasn't right the first time, but because there's something of his people pulling on them in the moment. And sometimes what you thought was for one Sunday could turn into a couple of weeks worth of something. So today we're going to get into part two of Winded. Last week we told you, and we're going to get in a little bit more about that python spirit that would want to squeeze the life out of you. There were so many individuals that stopped me after service, so many that hit me on, 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 on the inbox and, the, and all that, saying how uh, the word they didn't understand what it was until last Sunday. So this Sunday, I want to dig into it a little bit further for the time we have. And I want to give you the rest of this so when you go home and you're this week in your prayer closet, you're this week trying to manage and navigate, uh, uh, as, as, as my dad would say, through turbulent times, you're able to understand understand what's going on to you and with you and for you 
when we understand about winded, a lot of times uh, warning, uh, if you're taking notes, it's a good place. Warning comes before your windedness. A lot of times we say warning comes before destruction. But warning comes before your windedness. Let me give you case in point of what that looks like. If you have a vehicle like I have, then you know there's this thing and there's this letter that's down there towards the left of your gas tank gauge. There's a letter on this side. There's a letter on that side. Or depending on what kind of car you got, there's a letter up here. There's a letter down here. But once you get to the letter down here or over here, there's usually a little light. If you got a newer car, that thing start beeping and it lets you know that you are low on fuel. Now some of us, we blame everything on faith, so let me go with you. What that light indicates is a warning that you're about to run out of gas. But some of us vehicle experts, I got at least 15 minutes of fumes. And then when you got that smart car, it tell you how many miles you got until you run out. So you sitting there gauging between, well that says 20 mile marker, I got 30. Yes Lord, we gonna make it. And you are negotiating. Now the older saints, my grandfather would tell us, if you fill up when you get to halfway, it costs less than it is to try to put it in there empty. You don't believe my grandfather getting your car before he speak, he look at your gas hand. <laughs> and that, yep, that's why you go pick him up because you know you're getting gas. You go pick up my grandfather on E. No, don't go over there. Pull over there. That's when they had the gas station on Leavenworth Road and you pull up to the gas station, they fill your tank and wipe your windows all at the same time. But he would not go anywhere with you if you were not on full because he didn't want to get stuck nowhere. But most of us, even when the indicator comes on, if you tell the truth, even when you got the money, sometimes you just don't feel like stopping. That's why some of y'all won't get these smart cars. Electricity? No, I need to see what I'm putting in my tank. <laughs> if they cut out on you, if the electricity go out, you done. At least I can push this. But at the end of the day, you don't want to pay attention even though the light comes on. You will negotiate with your own self about something that will not negotiate with you. I'm a, let me bring that back. I don't care what kind of negotiation you do in your own self. When that gas run out, it run out. And y'all, this ain't the day it was back in the day. Back in the day, you could run out of gas, 10 people gonna pull over, are you okay, you need some help? I got a gas tank in my truck. Let me help you there, drive you to the gas tank, pay for your gas, bring you back, help you fill it up. No, you run out of gas at eight o'clock, you gonna be there eight o'clock a.m. to eight o'clock p.m. sitting there talking about, Lord, I'm just waiting. People are not as generous and nice. When that warning hits, you low on fuel, Vaughn. I got time. I can go a little further. I got a little while longer I can go. All the while, the warning signs we ignore and we ignore that E that is blinking and blinking and blinking. So we go until something ceases to function. What are you saying, Vaughn? We do the same in our life. Warning sign, you're tired. You need to pull away a little bit. No, I got it. I'm good. Have a seat. No, I'm good. Maybe you don't need to work all that overtime, but I love the money. And your body. Ding, 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 ding. Your back. Oh, God. Oh. 
And you know our favorite thing? I ain't as young as I used to be. But your body is giving you warning signs that I'm operating on E. And if you don't refuel me soon, I'm going to... Oh, no way. Yes. And then let's flip it and reverse it and then spiritually... Your spirit starts giving you warning signs. You're a little bit too irritated by that. You're a little too nasty. Now, we know you're nasty, but you're really nasty now. But I'm nice nasty. Same thing. You're nasty. You're still nasty. Your spirit man is telling you, I need to be revived. I need to, no, I got it. It ain't nothing I can't handle. I prayed last year. The spirit man is saying, I need to spend some time in worship. I don't have the time. But we're constantly engaged in things that drain us. Ah, saying that we don't have the time to refuel. And then what happens sometimes is our refusal, I'm going to give you a text in a moment, to wait on God wears us out. So I get winded because I can't wait. I get winded. I knew it was going to get quiet there. I like it. I get winded because I refuse to wait on God because God takes too long. Now, last week I asked you what happens when the wind gets knocked out of you. It's the difference between being the, the wind knocked out of you and just being wind dead. And I talked about sometimes stuff that happens in life that makes you winded, situations and circumstances. But today, since we're not talking about modern, we're talking about my. What is it about your personal ways that keeps us? What do we do day in and day out that keeps us in a winded state? Is it because we keep going ahead of God and instead of waiting on God, we gonna do God's job? And you will always get winded doing a responsibility that was not yours to do. One more time, Vaughn. You will always be winded trying to do God's job for him. You were not built to be God. You were built to be used by God. We're winded by refusal to wait. And a refusal to wait will have you winded and wore out. We'll wait for the right time to call somebody. Uh, I ain't talking about Jesus. I ain't talking about calling him up and telling him what you want. That ain't the Jesus. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll wait for the right moment to make a move. We'll wait for the right moment and the right one and we'll say, God, I knew you was going to do it for me, but you only waited due to what your expectations were. But we'll wait on everything. We'll wait in line for a meal. Wait at the game to get in. I don't understand it, but y'all wait at Whataburger. I don't get that wait. I'm sorry. I do not understand that way. Now the Chick-fil-A wait, I understand that. That's a... That's a godly way. Get yeah, a host. My God. And be of good courage. Yes. Ooh, I'm sorry. I just felt something in my Chick-fil-A. Here it is. But we don't mind waiting in lines to please our flesh. But we will not cause things to wait so we can feed our spirit. Okay. New King James Version, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 says it like this. But those who wait on the Lord shall we know that. Watch this. The text didn't say he did it. The text says, they shall renew in their. 
So me catching my breath, or if you will, as we said last week, catching my second wind is not always because I got to go, Elder Wilson, into war. Sometimes it's because I got to go into rest. Okay, okay. What are you saying, Vaughn? God is about to give, you don't have to receive it, I'll take it for myself. He's about to give us a second wind to rest. Okay, 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 okay. I'll get into it in a moment. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their... So you mean to tell me that Isaiah is saying as I wait on the Lord, I get renewed. So you mean to tell me that I don't get drained when I wait on him? Uh, he says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Now, funny thing is, in the day of my grandfather was here, when you say they shall mount up on wings like eagles, that's when he would say, just a moment. Yeah. And he would get to talking about the eagles and how they soar. And eagles don't walk with chickens and eagles don't walk on ground. He would talk about how the length of their wings would begin to spread and they can flap one time and they begin to ride the wave and they begin to soar above the storm. Some of us, the reason we can't rest is we trying to fight through stuff you should have rose above. You're going to have to make up in your mind what's below you now. I'm praying that in this birthday month, this night month, that some of y'all learn how to use these wings God gave you and flap your way into happiness. You sitting there going back and forth with people who don't, you don't need, what you arguing for? I can't stand you. You think you all that? What, some of y'all this week gonna be walked up? Do the eagle wing, do the eagle wing. I'm just joking, here it is. He said you will mount up with wings like eagles. Not only, now, this seems to be an oxymoron because first you're telling me that I either gonna mount up with wings of eagles, then you tell me I'm going to run and not be weary. Then you tell me I'm going to walk. So how is it, Benjamin? If I'm a fly, why I got to run? And if I'm a run, why I got to walk? What Isaiah is trying to get you to understand is no matter what stage of life you're in. No matter what segment or dimension or denomination of life you're in, if you're a walker, you gonna walk your way into the greatest miracle until you can run. God, some of us need to say, God, I wanna wait on you till my walk turns into a run and my run turns into... How is it? Uh, you, you will give me wings. Then you tell me, hey, I shall run and not be weary. Can I help y'all? You don't have to take this because this is my opinion. Let me make this really clear so we can be theologically correct. This is my opinion. When I read it, what I took for me is that God has given me strength to walk, run, and fly. So I can pick which one I want to do. Because there may be some stuff in my life I don't want to fly through. I just want to walk and enjoy the scenery. And there may be some people, God, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
in my life that I refuse to give up on. God help me. And they only may be able to walk, but he'll give me strength to walk with them until I can get them to the place where they can run. That's called discipleship. I'm sorry, we don't know nothing about that no more. Until the place where they can run and then they can fly. Because some folk in our life, Melissa, they never going to be able to walk until we teach them how. And soaring is not so you can dismiss everybody. Soaring is so you can build your strength to help somebody else soar with you. Don't be a selfish soar. If you a parent, you shouldn't be happy till your children soar. If you married, you shouldn't be happy till your spouse soar. You say, God, if I got to walk with them, give me strength. But when I got my time along, I'm going to go ahead and jump up here real quick. And I'm going to come back down and help them. If all they can do is run, God, help me to run with them. But when I'm by myself, and come on back down and run. Until they get to the place where we can all... Somebody say, I got a second wind coming. He says, but if you wait on the Lord, there's a renewal that's happening, Mother Marie, for us. The thing I love about God, uh, and I love my mother's boy, they're the best mother's boy in the whole wide world. Listen, the thing I love about, the thing I love about God is that this renewal and this second wind is not age prejudice. So no matter what walk of life you are in or what age group you fall in, there's a second wind for you. Huh. Now I'm saying second wind, W-I-N-D, not second W-I-N, because you can't win if you can't breathe. Erica, we can't win if we can't. How you gonna finish a race and you can't get your second wind to finish it? All right, I'll talk about it then. Here it is. Again, I want you to make this point in your mind that the restoration of your win is not just for war. It's for rest. I am praying that God give us, at least in this house, a discernment of seasons and times. That when he breathes that ruach, that second wind, we'll know sometimes how to take the wind and sit down with it. I know you don't know what I got to deal with. You don't know what kind of bills I got to pay. You don't know what I have to do for my family, but you're no good if you can't breathe. Oh, boy. Yeah. Be ye not weary in well doing. For in due season ye shall reap if you... It doesn't say you want Eddie get to the point of fainting. That's the thing about a second win. What happens with a second win, every runner knows that when you get to ex the exasperation of that first win, it can feel like your body's about to shut down. It can feel like you're, you're, uh, 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 you're losing it. It can feel like your body is about to quit on you. And there's something that happens, either chemically, mentally. Scientists say it's a couple of ways it happens. But at the end of the day, all they can come to the conclusion is it's called a second wind. And when that second wind kicks in, it usually gives you a burst of supernatural energy or perspective that allows you to finish what you so, if I'm not going to give up, I have to give in to my wind. You, 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 you see, those who know how to tap in to the second wind are some of the best athletes you'll ever have. Uh, you got... Uh, uh, you, you got one of the most famous athletes to ever live, and that's Michael Jordan. Now, on the basketball court, he's the best. Now, in life, it's another story. But on the basketball court, he's phenomenal. And whether he had the flu or not is still up for debate, but they say he did. 
But you can't have the flu play like that unless you get a second wind. You get a second Okay. The, the, if my grandfather was here, if my dad was here, the wind. What is the significance of wind, Vaughn? Because what God is trying to redeem to his people is the wind of dominion and authority. You've got the wind to breathe, but you now need the wind to speak. In the beginning, God created everything with and ever since Genesis 3 man has been trying to get back to the original because the original breath of God has never been able to be reduplicated it's been consistent throughout Time and what we were robbed of is the authority with the wind. And some of us, the difference between you fainting, the difference between you passing out, and the difference between you getting your second wind is your mouth. You will never get a second wind if you always speak windless things in your life. I can't take no more. There you go. Now y'all told me, come close, don't leave me now. Y'all told me life and death is in the power of the tongue. And paraphrasing, if you love it, you gonna eat it. So what are you speaking You can't mount up if you speak in low places. You can't run if you speak lameness. You can't walk if your words are paralyzing you. If life and death is in the power of your tongue, again, I hate to remind you, but let me hit you in your forehead. There is no power in life and death. The power is in your tongue. So your words either carry your future or your funeral. That's it. What comes out of your mouth is either going to kill you or cause you to live. You cannot be. They used to say, uh, and, and I've never been a woman, don't want to be, have no desire to be. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. I'm all him. God bless you. But they would say, when women get pregnant, they begin to crave certain things. Peanut butter, ice cream in the middle of the night, whatever the case may be, Durachos, whatever you crave. Durachos or Doritos, yeah, y'all know. Yeah, okay, there you go. Somebody, somebody was like, yes, thank you, yes. I sure could use some Durachos today. Uh, because you can't go to Chick-fil-A. But here it is. So they crave things, but then they put women on something called sometimes prenatal vitamins because they want them to make sure what they're putting in there will be productive for what they are. Thank you. So what is one are you putting in your mouth? Two, what's coming out of your mouth? I've heard pregnant women over the years time and time again, you look at them, if you just look at them strange because they got like 12 plates of Anderson, they be like, don't look at me like that, I'm eating for two. (laughs) Don't look at me strange because I got so much on my plate because I'm eating Vaughn, don't do it. I am. Because I'm eating for two. So if you will eat for two, why are you only speaking for one? Wow. 
is, is this not making sense? Okay. If you got enough sense to know you're eating for two, why are you only, what you mean by, I mean, it makes no, it makes no sense to be pregnant with purpose and you speak like there ain't nothing in you. What's coming out? Your mouth. You, 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 you. Why are you doing this on the first Sunday? Because if we're going to do this ninth month right, you're going to have to watch your mouth. You're going to have to stop using the wind of God on stuff that don't even need wind. Look at your neighbor and say, watch your mouth. Some of y'all just loose mouth. Just watch your mouth. Loose lips sink ships. Watch your mouth. This is not the month because watch this, when you're birthing, everything is sensitive. And you're at a very, thank you, Holy Spirit. EC, we're at a very crucial moment right here in time. Let, let me, I'm almost out of time. Let me, let me, let me say, I feel something prophetic. Let me say this. If we don't handle the ninth month right, the 10th month is going to wear you out. That, hear me, there is something arising the latter part of this year. I don't know exactly what it is. I will not lie to you. I don't know exactly what it is, but I just sense that there is something that is trying to come up in this nation and in this world by the time this year is over that is trying to shake the foundation of everything and that next year it's not going to get no better, but there's going to be a mighty shaking. There's going to be a mighty pulling and you've got to do everything you can to take all your prenatal vitamins, everything you're supposed to. You're going to have to get this thy word have I hidden in my heart you're going to have to watch what comes out of your mouth you cannot speak death you cannot speak harm you cannot speak chaos you want to validate and check every word and filter it before it comes out your mouth you know why sometimes the day can't line up because you cursed it before you started it Dick, we speak so many curses Lord, I can't stand these kids. You'll never stand them then. Y'all, I know, I'm being petty. That's what you feel. But when you got power, my mom used to tell me, boy, you don't know how heavy-handed you are. I said, my bad, I wasn't trying. And she said, your hand is heavy, stop. I said, I didn't know. And that's how we are in the spirit. We're playing with God. We're playing with stuff with our words because we don't know how heavy our voices are. And we don't understand how important language is. And we're speaking negative over our homes. We're speaking negative over our lives. We're speaking negative over our children. We're speaking negative over our businesses and our life. And then we want to turn around and say, Give me a second win. You will never get a second win until your confession lines up. See, it's easy, Steph, for us to jump on the he's all right. 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 And we get happy about that. But he didn't change. So why does your confession? The same God you talked about the other Sunday, it was you. It was you pulling me through. <laughs> but before you could get to Wednesday, I don't know what's going on in my life. He pulling you through. Because when you learn how to change your confession, church, you will find that the second wind becomes therapeutic. And some of you, you just need to line your confession up. I know, I know, it's too much. That's what they do in Acts chapter 4. We got the Holy Ghost. Watch this. I'm going to give it to you quick. In chapter 2 of Acts, they're in the upper room. They are worn out. They're in a place of distress. They're in a place of discouragement because the Savior has just been taken from them. That's why out of all the people, there was only 120 went up to the room because none of the rest of them wanted to go. Go up there for what? He gone. 
That was a crowd supposed to be. But only 120 went up there because everybody else didn't think it was worth it. So on the day of Pentecost, when the Bible says the Holy Spirit came in as a sound of a mighty rush of rent and filled the room that they were in, and the Bible said, and they were clothed with tongue. The Bible said that when they got clothed with tongue, they spake in tongues. I'll get into that later. But the Bible says they spoke in tongues. They spoke, as we say, as the Spirit. And the Bible says every man heard them. Now, that's a whole terminology. We'll get to that later in their own language. But my focus today is Acts chapter 4. By the time we get to 4, something has transpired because now they're worn out busted and disgusted and they're upset and they're frustrated but this is what they pray elder starts they say god anoint us paraphrase it let your holy spirit fall so we now can speak your word with confidence this next phase of your life and i'm gonna close right here is not for you to speak in tongues it's for you to proclaim his See, that's the problem. You got complaining down, but you ain't got no word in you. God said, this second win I'm going to give you is a win to hunger. See, I, I know I'm not going to have a whole lot of folk. It's going to be a hunger and thirst for my word. Because once you get my word in your heart, once you get my word in your spirit, then there's something about you that cannot be defeated. Because what they prayed for in Acts chapter 4 was give us the spirit so we can understand the word, so we can speak with confidence. We want the Holy Ghost to shout, dance, talk, and speak. But we don't want the Holy Ghost to help us design this word the word life is going I'm sorry for getting all excited and passionate the word life is important because what's coming to this world again you are gonna need the word I know everybody want to act like we out the woods everything want to act like everything's okay y'all want to act like everything we good we going through life have you forgotten how quick things can turn for the worse? Have you forgotten how the quick things can be chaotic in this nation? You better not bury your head in that sand. You better lift up your head, open up your chest and say, God, help me discern your word. Because the enemy don't care nothing about us preaching. He don't care. No, I'm sorry. He don't care none of the devil is a lie. Y'all gonna hear this today. He don't care nothing about our preaching. He don't care nothing about our singing. He don't care how many times we high five a neighbor. He don't care how many times we turn around in a circle. He don't care how many times we run up and down the aisle. What he cares about is that you don't get that word in you that when you can't find the preacher, when you can't find the praise team, when you can't find a prayer partner, you can stand in the middle of your front room and you can declare the word of the law with boldness and confidence enough of this church bad talking talk bad at home everybody tough when you got a neighbor but can you be tough when ain't nobody there to high five you and you ain't got no music and you ain't got no organ and it's just you your problems and God can you speak to your situation and tell it to get thee behind me Satan? So this is the month I'm praying I'm praying that God give us a new hunger for the word I'm praying he give us a new hunger for his spirit I'm praying that we won't heal more than we want the movies we won't heal more than we want a boo we won't heal more than we want to pay because if you get this word it'll walk out its own self in your life The word gives a conviction that causes restraint. Without conviction, there's no restraint. Without conviction, there's no restraint. So it does not matter what we do in church if we don't have conviction. Let me help somebody pop you in your head. Conviction is not a suit versus shorts conviction is not a number five bag versus natural hair mm -mm. 
That ain't conviction. Conviction is not whether I want to go natural face it or I want to beat that face to the moon and back. That ain't conviction. Conviction is when you're faced with something in your life and you refuse to go back to where you come from and there's something on the inside of you say, you know what, I don't like it, but I ain't going back there. I don't like where I am, but I ain't going back there. No, no, no. That's conviction. When you can stand in the middle of hell and tell hell I ain't coming and I'm getting out of here as soon as I can. I'm just a stranger passing. Stand to your feet. The conviction becomes my constraint, my restraint. Without conviction, there's no restraint. Conviction is not just so I can have a problem with sin. Conviction is so I can have a problem with everything that don't line up with what God said. Watch this. Let me help you. So that's when something hits my body. My conviction says I don't have to receive this. But my restraint says I might have to change some things. My conviction says, the Bible says that I'm healed and I will not have high blood pressure. Restraint says quit eating chicken at 3 a.m. Conviction is for you to pay attention. Restraint is for you to walk. I ain't gonna go no further. But with the word comes conviction and restraint. But if you don't know the word, I'm gonna say to my millennials and my youth, I don't want you, hear me, if you're submitted to this house, if you was thinking about it, this may change your mind, but hear me. I don't believe you should know all the words to Beyonce. And you don't even know John 3.16. It don't make sense that you know all the lyrics to Beyonce Church Girl, but you don't know nothing about Proverbs. You know Jay-Z, but don't know nothing about Jeremiah. Something's wrong. Walk it out. Read it out. I'm not fussing. But if we're going to live the life that's been predestined for us, you don't know what that life is without the word. We have the purpose. We got awesome music. Praise team musicians. Oh, wonderful. And when they play, heaven rejoices. But you can't play right without a word. You can't lift the enemy without word in your heart. Even as a musician, it's got to be word that's in here that comes out through here. Never mind. As a vocalist, it's got to be word in here that comes. When you got, listen here, when you got a musician pit that's full of the word, when you got a praise team that's full of the word, when you got parking lot attendants who are full of the word, when you got host team that's full of the word, when you got ushers that's full of the word, when you got AV team that's full of the word, you got people in the pews that's full of the word, there is a combustion that begins to happen because it's a word place. Here it is. Let's go. It's time to go. We want to we wanna serve God from a place of certainty, not assumption. Not serving you, guessing who you are. I want to serve you with relationship. Father God. Oh God. 
We danced, we praised. We went up. But now we got to come down and walk this thing out. And sometimes, God, we get caught up in the up. We jump high, but walk wrong. We leap, but we can't run. But your word says that if we just wait on you, which is why we have to know the word, that you will let us mount up with wings as eagles. But it's because of our weight on you that we're strengthened. So we're going to wait in the word. God, thank you for the camera light action. But it don't mean nothing if we ain't got no word. Thank you for joining us today. You may have heard us talk about giving your life to Christ or receiving salvation. I wanted to take a moment to speak with you a little bit more about what that means. I believe the big question is, why? Why would I give my life to Christ? The first thing that's really important to understand is as human beings, we've all done something wrong. Whether that's lying or cheating or stealing, and the list goes on. No one is perfect. God calls those things sin. The second thing we have to understand is that sin, the bad things that we've done, separates us from God. It drives a wedge between us and God. It's like when we have a serious disagreement with a friend or and we feel that distance, that, that gap or that space emotionally in our relationship, it's similar to that. Our sin caused distance between us and God. And that sin, those wrong things that we've done, they just can't be swept under the rug or ignored by God. They separate us from Him. The third thing is that God loves us and doesn't want us to be separated from Him. He hates that. So He gave us a way to reconnect with Him he sent his one and only son, Jesus, from heaven down to earth to live a sinless life and to show us how we can live a life in relationship with God again. But he didn't stop there. He willingly sacrificed his life to erase all of our sins so we don't have to fear sin causing that separation or, or that wedge anymore. Nothing can prevent us from having a relationship with God again. Nothing will ever separate us from his love. The fourth thing that's important to understand is that it's up to you to give your life to God, to believe and accept that God loves us. He sent his son to die for us and he wants to forgive us for our sins that we've committed. God wants us to have a choice. If you force someone to love you, is that really love? Of course not. God wants us to respond to him genuinely out of the understanding of his love for us and the lengths he's taken to restore our relationship with him. God walks us through how to give our life to him in the Bible in Romans 10, 9 through 10. It says, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you're saved. That's all we have to do to accept what God has done for us and restore that relationship with him. Confess and believe. I know that may sound simple or even cliche, but I promise you it really is just that simple. Wherever you are today, at home, in your car, at the gym, at school, you can talk to God and tell him, I'm sorry for the sins I've committed. I believe you sent your son to die for my sins and I accept you in my life as my Lord. When you do that, you're making a decision. When you say that out loud and you choose to believe, you're giving your life to God and that is the best decision you will ever make. If you have given your life to God today, please let us know. We want to give you some resources to help you on this new and exciting journey on your life and help you grow. Please visit our website, ecinternational.org, select Next Steps, then select New Believer, or scan the QR code on the screen and select I've Accepted Christ. God bless you. See you next time.